My name is Lindsay Stringer and I'm a Professor in Environment and Development at the University of Leeds in the UK. Welcome to this session which tells you about how to design and develop a policy brief. So what is a policy brief? Generally it's a short standalone document about two to four pages long. There's no single approach that you'll find everywhere in terms of how people construct their policy briefs. It really varies according to the type of audience that you're trying to reach. Generally, a policy brief should provide headline findings and set out their implications for a non-technical audience. It should identify why your audience should care about the subject, but also identify the urgency of the action that's needed. Ideally, the urgency is presented in terms of the benefits, the advantages, but also what people have to lose if they don't act now. And it ends by providing a kind of menu of policy options or recommendations. The first thing you need to do is identify your audience and how to reach them. Which policymakers are you going to be targeting? Ask yourself and ask them what do they already know about the topic that you're focusing on? How open are they to engaging with you? It's really important as well to find out when they need information from you, as well as finding out how best they need it in terms of how it's presented in the policy brief. If they have a policy review coming up and they're linked to a particular review cycle, then getting your information at the right moment could then affect its ability to actually get into that policy. As a result, it's often better to start talking to your policymakers at the very beginning of your project working with them to help you identify the main questions that need to be answered and the main questions that you can help them with, but also, as I said, to identify when they need the information from you about your project. An early engagement can really benefit you later down the line as well, because if they know you, they've already built up a relationship with you, then they can help you to disseminate your project findings. So it really broadens your audience. In terms of the focus of a policy brief, Generally, even if you've got a project that's covering multiple different areas, generally a single focus is best. So it may not cover everything that you're looking at in your project. You need to define the purpose of your, your project and the policy brief and identify the main arguments that support your aim. Extract the essential information. And it's easy to be overloaded with detail and bogged down in it because you're the one that knows so much about the project but just to extract around three key points, that can work well. You then need to develop your structure. And normally the structure that's taken is presenting an executive summary, then an introduction, methods and results, conclusion, and then implications and options. And what we're gonna do over the next few minutes is talk through what you might include in each of these sections. So the executive summary, normally it's no more than 250 words. The shorter, the better. You'll probably write it last as well, even though it appears at the top of the first page and is the first thing that people will see. Treat it as your headlines, distill the essence of the project and give an overview that encourages your reader to keep on reading. For the introduction, you need to set out why the work's important, explaining its significance, but also its urgency. Why do people need to carry on reading and why does this need to be read now? Describe the aim and provide an overview of your findings and conclusions. But again, don't get bogged down in the detail. It just needs to be short, crisp and concise. And again, this is an opportunity because you're still on the front page. It's an opportunity to spur interest for the reader to keep on reading. The next section is the methods and the results. And this sets out the how, the how of the work, how it was conducted, but also the whom, who collected the data. Again, don't get bogged down in the detail. What you should be doing is providing any relevant background information to describe the key points of the issue and the key aspects of the context that you're dealing with. This section should also briefly note, as I said, the how, the methods, but also the analyses and when you're doing this, make sure it's done in a non-technical way. So it should be understandable to the average person that you're sitting next to, maybe on the train, who's engaged you in conversation. So it needs to be accessible and easily understood. Moving on to the results section, start this in a general way, painting a general picture and overview of what you found. 
You can then channel things down a bit, move from the general to the specific, drawing and summarising on the key facts and figures. Think about how you're presenting the information as well. Tables can often look a bit overcrowded, maybe not look so visually appealing, but charts, photos, other graphics can be really useful in terms of simplifying understanding. Be careful if you are going to use charts and figures though, because they need to have an appropriate caption. The captions should aim to explain the content so that if somebody picks up the policy brief and just looks at your figure, they can see immediately what your figure's about. So it should be understandable on standalone reading. The next section is your conclusions, and you aim, need to aim to be quite concrete here, showing how they emerge from the results. You need to be making strong assertions, but at the same time, they must be substantiated. So you need to show that line of evidence. Make sure your ideas are also balanced and defensible. The last section is possibly the most important after the executive summary, that is. And that's the implications and the options. Now the implications set out what could happen. If X is going to continue, then Y is likely to happen. So it can often be presented usefully in a kind of if-then type format. Make sure you know any uncertainties associated with what you're presenting as well. If you're not 100% sure, then you need to say and you need to flag those uncertainties up. Implications are generally less direct than recommendations and they can be quite useful if your advice hasn't actually been requested. So rather than just trying to impose what you found on somebody, to just make them aware of the implications in a friendly way can often be the most appropriate approach. So really what you're trying to do by thinking about the implications is be persuasive without being policy prescriptive. Also remember that policymakers aren't as interested in the research and the science as you are. They're interested in the people, not the science. So think about the implications for the people that they care about, so for society and for the voting public in general. Now the options or the recommendations are what should happen. And both of these flow from the conclusion and again must be supported by evidence. Describe clearly what should happen as precise next steps so it's really easy for the policymaker to follow. And ensure that your suggestions are relevant, credible, and also feasible. And it's worth remembering that often the first question a policymaker has for each option is, well, how much is that going to cost me? So if you can get costs information as well and include that, then you know, all the better. They're more likely to be able to action your recommendations then. So that's the content, but what about the layout? Well, titles provide a reference point, but it's the subtitles that really break up the text and give it its structure. And it's the subtitles that can be used to entice the reader as well. You can use verbs to make your subtitles sound more active, or you can just ask questions in your subtitles. Be careful if you ask questions though, because then you've got to make sure that you answer them. And it's you know, easy to get carried away and have a nice catchy question heading, and then start writing about something else. So do be aware of that. Nevertheless, questions can be a good hook to get people interested in, in the particular section or subsection that you're talking about. There's also all sorts of tricks you can use to draw attention to specific aspects of the main discussion. So you can use call-outs. Call-outs are sentences or sentence fragments that might be in larger font, a different type of font or bold font, and they can be boxed or placed in the margins, and they just draw that little extra bit of attention to certain words. Another option is to use sidebars. Sidebars are short, descriptive, action-focused, um, and it, as they, the clues in the name, as it sounds like, they often are at the side of the page. The final little trick you can sometimes use to, to gain attention to specific aspects is bullet-pointed lists. So with your bulleted lists, you need three, five or seven, probably three or five points that present completed thoughts. So you don't just want to be presenting you know, a few words in note form. You need to have completed thoughts rather than just one or two words. And odd numbers seem to work best. They flow better and they fit nicely in terms of the way that we read and understand things. As I said at the very beginning, there's a whole range of different ways that you can approach doing a policy brief. There's a whole range of different layouts. What I've done is compiled a few for you to have a look at. 
And what I suggest you do is to read them, but read them with a critical eye. Think about what you like about them. Think about also what you don't like, what isn't appealing, what does work and what doesn't work. And then you can use some of those ideas as you develop the layout of your policy brief. It's not all over when you've finished your brief though, because it's not actually finished. You've probably just finished the first draft. What you need to go and do is test it. So you need to find willing victims, so willing colleagues, friends or family members. And you can ask them how it looks. Could it be more user friendly? Do they understand what you're actually trying to say? Is it full of buzzwords and jargon or have you managed to communicate things quite clearly? Have you blinded them with statistics and information or have you provided them with just about the right amount of, of knowledge and information that they need? Ask them to check your arguments. Do they stand up to scrutiny? And have you presented sufficient evidence to support what you're saying? Have you been sufficiently persuasive without being over domineering about it? You don't want to be sounding too instructive or dictatorial, but you do need to sound persuasive, confident and serious. Now, the final step, once you've taken on board your feedback from your friends and family, you've edited your policy brief accordingly and then retested it. Once everybody's happy with it, that's the time when you can go and do the dissemination. And the final step through the dissemination is that you actually target your policy brief to the policy audience that you first identified. So this is where it actually gets out to the audience that, that you want to read it. I'll stop there. Good luck as you go and develop your own policy briefs. And thank you very much for being part of the Soil MOOC.